Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Welcome back to the final episode of the first shorts season one. Alhamdulillah. Not the first. We still have more to go in the Nahi Ta'ala. But the final episode inshallah ta'ala of this particular element where we have been looking through some of these short biographies that we find that we want to revive bi idnillahi ta'ala for ourselves so we can properly appreciate them. Now, before I get into the Sahaba today, what do we plan to do inshallah ta'ala? Uh, sometime shortly, we will start season two bi idnillahi ta'ala, so look out for that. And we will pick back up with the full biographies inshallah ta'ala. And we'll start with the earliest of the Ansar to come and to embrace the Prophet sallallahu and his message that set the stage in Medina. And so please do remain tuned in. And I appreciate all of you who have been a part of this, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And I pray that it's been of benefit to you and your families and that we not only name our children after these great people, but we emulate them in our own lives and inshallah ta'ala be gathered with them, with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and these noble companions in the highest level of, of al-Firdaus al-A'la, Allahumma ameen. So jazakumullah khayran once again, it's the 70th episode, which is uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, place for us to be. And inshallah ta'ala, we will continue to go on and on. And I hope that it will remain of benefit and may Allah forgive me for any shortcomings along the way. So as we have now started to move towards Al-Madinah and orienting ourselves towards Al-Madinah and what is to come in Al-Madinah, I wanted to talk about this last group of people from the Muhajireen and they are the first in Badr. Now, what I mean by that is these are early Muslims from Mecca who made the sacrifice of the Hijrah and who died first amongst those great shuhada of Badr. And SubhanAllah, I want to focus on three people that are the first of the first in this regard. Imagine the very first shaheed on the day of Badr. That is an incredible honor, right? The best companions were the companions of Badr, the best angels were the angels of Badr. This was Yawm al-Furqan, the day that the criterion is sent, the day that everything is made clear. This is a day of great reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine then the status of the shuhada of Badr, the martyrs of Badr, and imagine the very first shaheed on that day. And this is a man by the name of Mihja ibn Salih. Mihja radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we know almost nothing about. Literally, subhanAllah, you comb through the books to find anything that you can about this man. And you would think, subhanAllah, the first martyr on the day of Badr, and you'd have so much about him, but like many of these companions, just a line or two about who they were. So Mihja radiAllahu ta'ala anhu was one of those who was a slave in Mecca, who became Muslim and was persecuted. However, the one who would free him was not Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but rather it was Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So we know that he is amongst the severely persecuted slaves in Mecca, but the one who frees him is Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so he became loyal to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and continued to accompany Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu for the rest of his life. And Mihja radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the only thing that we see about him are these small lines about his ibadah, for example, that he was a great worshiper, that he would pray at night with Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or he was a, you know, one who was competing with the righteous worshipers in this regard. We also find the narration where uh, it said that the Prophet and this is in Al-Hakim, that the Prophet mentioned Khayr al-Sudan, Talatha, that the best of all black men and women are three, Luqman al-Hakim, Bilal and Mihja radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So he is in the, in the category of Luqman and Bilal. And of course, there are multiple uh, courses and books that you can uh, go look up where the Prophet sallallahu talked about the specific you know, forerunners of a people. So he counted Mihja radiallahu ta'ala anhu amongst the best of all black people in the category of Luqman and Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. So this is something where you find you know, a lot of, of benefit and a lot of blessing. And what we find on the day of Badr is that one narration of him is that he was saying, Ana mihja wa ila rabbi arji I am mihja and to my Lord I am returning. So he would continuously repeat, Ana mihja, I am mihja wa ila rabbi arji and to my Lord I am returning. And what a way to return to his Lord. Mihja radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
was struck by an arrow on the day of Badr, the first martyr on the day of Badr, the first shaheed on the day of Badr, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The second person we'll speak about here briefly is Ubaidah ibn al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. Ubaidah ibn al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a cousin of the Prophet sallallahu who embraced Islam before Dar al-Arqam. So he's also considered one of the earliest Muslims. And Ubaid ibn al-Harith, uh, you know, being who he was in terms of his lineage, is a person who will enjoy the privilege of at least not facing the same type of severe persecution that we have in Mecca towards some, like Mihja radiallahu anhu and some of those others that we covered. But Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was about 10 years older than the Prophet Sallallahu So he's an older cousin to the Prophet Sallallahu That means that when the Prophet Sallallahu received revelation, he was already 50 years old and he immediately embraces the Prophet Sallallahu and dedicates himself to him. Because of who he was, he is said to be amongst those that suffered under the boycott, but he stayed in Mecca uh, despite all of that. And he made hijrah with the Prophet Sallallahu and he was someone that also was given duties early on in Medina to be amongst the flag bearers. So he is someone who they say was the second flag bearer in Islam after Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu leading 60 muhajireen under his command. And as he was fighting in Badr, what we know about Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that he came out on that day in the early duels. So we spoke about this with Hamza as well as Ali, may Allah be pleased with them that on the day of Badr, as you had the duels that took part, as you had the duels that took place in the very beginning, from the side of the Muslims, Hamza came out, Ali came out, and Ubaidah came out. So these were the three Muslims to come out in the beginning of the day of Badr. And they fought Utbah and Al-Walid and Shayba. okay? So Ubaidah, is the only one who suffered a wound in that duel in the very beginning of the battle. Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he overcame Utbah and he killed him right away. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he overcame Al-Walid and he killed him right away. As for Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as he was fighting Shayba, they were both wounded. And then Hamza and Ali overcame uh, Shayba in that duel. And so Shayba was killed and Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was severely wounded, but he survived at least the course of Badr, and he died on the way back from Badr. So he was the first to be wounded on the day of Badr, and he was being carried back from Badr, and he died in a place called As Safra. SubhanAllah, I've been to that place. It's just his grave. It's not so far from Badr. As they were returning from Badr, he's not buried with the rest of the Shuhada of Badr. You just have the grave of Ubaid ibn Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and there's a narration that later on, as they walked by that place of As-Safra, they smelled musk. And they asked the Prophet Sallallahu about that musk that they smelled. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, how could it not be such when Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is buried there? So another distinct individual on that day from the Muhajireen that were also martyred on the day of Badr. And we'll talk about some of the Ansar later on in the series, inshaAllah ta'ala. So you had the first martyr, being Mihja, the first one to actually lose his life on the day of Badr. And you have the first one to actually uh, be wounded, but of course he would die later. And that was Ubaidah ibn al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who died shortly after, 10 years older than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was uh, at that point 63 or 64 years old and buried in a safra And then there's one more person that I'll mention inshallah ta'ala here, and that is Umayr ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umayr ibn Abi Waqqas was the younger brother of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he embraced Islam, you know, very, very young. And he wanted so badly to fight at the day of Badr. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent him away because he was too young. And Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu literally cried and begged to be amongst those that would fight on the day of Badr. He did not want to miss the opportunity. And eventually, as he cried, as he showed that deep emotion, the Prophet ﷺ allowed him to fight despite him being a young teenager. And Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu passed away in Badr as well. So subhanAllah, you have the old man in Ubaid ibn al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, who came forth on that day. And you have the likes of Umayr ibn Abi Waqqas, 
who came forth on that day and he said, I don't want to miss out on Al-Jannah. I don't want to miss out on Al-Jannah. This whole thing to him was about something far more great than anything that he would achieve later on in his life, being in that momentous occasion and being amongst those who were counted amongst the great martyrs of Badr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Allahumma ameen. So inshallah ta'ala, as we covered Mihja and Ubaid ibn al-Harith and Umayr ibn Abi Waqqas, as the time goes on with the next season, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we'll get into some of the longer biographies of some of the Ansar as well that showed up on the day of Badr and that were killed in Badr. May Allah be pleased with all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and join us with our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and his companions in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.